Will NFTs be priced in ETH, USD, or neither? Welcome to another episode of Macro Crypto, where each and every Tuesday, the topic of conversation is dominated by the Prince of Crypto, Ethereum, and today's content is no different. We will be uh, comparing the Ethereum network against the NFT marketplace based off previous data. History tells us we can help us, or at the very least, Give us a prediction to set expectations on where we might be trending. If you do enjoy this content today, give us a like, subscribe, head over to that Twitter page at Macro Crypto Club, give us a follow. Like always, the link will be down in the description. Let's go ahead and look at the weekly hike in Ashy Candles through the eyes of Ethereum, checking out the current price just north of $3,000. Got a little green action, closing last week green. First time potentially, depending on how the rest of the week plays out, we might get a back-to-back green candle through Ethereum for the last four plus months. Bullish sentiment right around the corner, maybe? Look, we're currently still bearish, as Benjamin Cohen likes to put it. Anytime we're below this band, it is a bear market band, okay? But can we break through it at some point this week or into next week? Only time will tell, and then we can have some more bullish sentiment, right? But Let's go off some predictions through this crosshairs. We'll always keep this up as time moves along, tracking this weekly. Do gotta remind you, it is a prediction from a dude on YouTube, okay? I just use past data, throwing a prediction out there for fun, okay? Do not take anything I say as gospel. We're not here for financial advice. We're just here for pure entertainment purposes only. With that being said, we will track this weekly and potentially get a new all-time high on May 17th is our prediction. Yeah, very specific. If you want to check out the video that we made that prediction, I will throw it at the end of this video for you to check out for yourself. But that is either here nor there. We are here for one reason, one reason only, to compare Ethereum past data with regards to the NFT marketplace and help us understand where we might be trending within NFTs. So. Two data sets I want you to uh, keep in mind throughout this video is July 19th, the candle that we had. We uh, Within the last year, that was an all-time low for us, or we tested an all-time low and just matched it. And four months later, the candle of November 8th, where we peaked out four months later, okay? So just keep those two in mind, July 19th and November 8th. Let's go ahead, check out some Dune Analytics for the top NFT marketplace, OpenSea, monthly fees back in July, nada. If you weren't around, August, we exploded within the NFT marketplace or NFT space in general. August was a massive month. And from that point uh, over the next four months into the all-time high of November 8th, we had the lowest amount of fees within the last six months on OpenSea during the peaks of the crypto space. So keep that in mind. But the one thing that is so promising within uh, the NFT marketplace in general is the exponential growth. All right, in January, we hit over a million users on OpenSea alone, trending towards 1.5 million. If you know anything about exponential growth, it's a lot easier to get the 2 million than it was to get the 1 million, okay? And that's only gonna bring more user bases. And so that means, guess what? You're early, I'm early. Let's keep diving into the content. So checking out the OpenSea uh, marketplace, understanding potentially, are we hot? Are we cold within the NFTs? This kind of gives us in comparison with the ETH price, with the volume of ETH on OpenSea, actually gives a good indication because when obviously the price of ether was at all times high in comparison to those uh the transactions on OpenSea, when these two are getting close to that 50 percent not a whole lot of action okay so we got a pretty wide gap which we've seen a lot of beautiful action january had an all-time high uh of transactions by users so you can also kind of see that here as well during the all-time high of crypto, we had the lowest amount of open, uh, OpenSea active users. And that is also in correlation to the Ethereum price. So the reason why I bring this up is because, look, when Ether and the crypto was coming out of a bearish trend and the uh, you know those summer lulls by July 19th, it was not a month and a half later when we really started to see the explosion with NFTs. So are we going to still see that potentially in the next you know month and a half ourselves? If this is truly the bottom, what we saw with Ethereum, 
you know, a couple months ago, are we about to really see a sentiment or a change within the crypto space for NFTs? Only time's gonna tell. Let's go ahead, dive into OpenSea in general and check out some of the blue chips within the space and how they trended over time because guess what? We're gonna be painting a picture that not all NFTs are created equal. So checking out CyberKong's one of the first and most explosive NFT projects within the space have had a lot of crazy ups and downs. If you look at their volume over time, this is from the creation, this is uh, over the past year, a lot of volatility and a lot of price action as well. So you'll notice a lot of early volume before the November highs of crypto, and then after has had a multiple times of high volume as well. So if you're thinking about anything in regards to CyberKongs, it's just very sporadic. Bored Apes is interesting. When we look at Bored Apes, obviously you look at the August volume, insane. Had a lot of volume for a lot of NFTs within the space. And obviously this volume over here, the Ape coin was introduced to the market, created a lot of volume and a lot of intrigue into Bored Apes. But the two things I wanna point out is this volume, which happens, if you notice, was after the peaks of the NFT space, everyone started buying in and we had a, uh, a little bit of a trout, uh, trend down. This volume was actually after a capitulation of Ethereum, which is very interesting because then all of a sudden there's a huge capitulation and maybe a lot of outside money in USD came and bought Ethereum so they could get into Bored Apes at a cheaper price based against USD. So just kind of some things, the food for thought. As we head into the you know Mutant Ape Yacht Club, a lot of trend within their timeline, not a whole lot of crazy action, just a lot of diamond holders, obviously that carries over from, oops, this is what I get for doing candid videos. But here we are trending just a lot of sideways movement with a lot of price action. I think this just compares obviously right up against Bored Apes. But things that we start tracking differently, you'll just notice, Every single community is different right now. We had a huge blow up on around uh, October 4th of last year for Cool Cats, and then just had a lot of sideways movement with positive back. And so a lot of just same action, very similar in regards to Ethereum overall during this timeline, but then we saw a huge decrease, and then that's where we saw an increase maybe in Cool Cats and the NFT in general. But it's, you know, what we're noticing obviously is that not every NFT is created equal and not every community, just because you feel like you can compare a specific NFT against Ether, you can't. The marketplace in general is based off communities and how communities um, create value is through their own community and who they can bring in. And if that's not obvious, I don't know what is, but before I babble on and just about nonsense, let's check out Doodles. Doodles right now had a very slow start. They actually didn't come around uh, since October, but then they had some partnerships. Obviously, celebrities got brought on, and now they had that explosion during early January. And then heading over to a, a project that just crashed and burned. This way, you can understand this is not a blue chip, but loot had early success, all that transaction volume in nothing since. Had a crazy little wick right there, but it just died off, okay? So obviously if you don't have a community, you don't have a future in regards to NFTs. Uh, the cryptodes, checking those out as well because you see this lovely spike in regards to uh, a Bored Ape commercial that had them in it. So created some you know, demand for this NFT project, but also happened early in September, had a lot of volume early on and has had died off and there's a lot of sideways movement. And then World of Women, checking them out, recently skyrocketed in volume, a little volume, volume, and then a big boom hit. And we're seeing that price action stabilize. So we're just going over all these different NFTs. The last one, the Doge Pound, little bit separate. They might be priced against uh, Doge, to be honest with you. A lot of price action early on. They came around in that uh, first August as the continuation of price of Ether going up. So did Doge. So that's interesting in itself. There might be no correlation with projects specifically in regards to the price of crypto and Ethereum. But what we do want to point out is that all of these NFTs have different volatility throughout time. And it 
you have to make that judgment for yourself in regards to the community. If you don't have a community, like we just mentioned, you don't have a future. So that's the way and how you want to grind out thinking moving forward when putting your money or allocating into a community and an NFT project. So just because uh, I think there's a lot of th thinking out there that, hey, NFTs are price of ETH goes up, NFTs are going to go down. We just saw it recently. I don't think it's going to be the case. And here's why. Making our case is that we're going to have multiple NFT marketplaces coming to the table and it's only going to bring mass users. Coinbase being one of those. Everyone obviously understands that Coinbase is just going to create more of a user base through the NFT space. Something that Journey is a part of and Cedify NFT space itself, they are more in line with the metaverse and gaming obviously also going to bring user base and there's going to be so many other nft marketplaces that are going to bring mass adoption into the nft space through ethereum now how we can price ethereum is if we're starting to get a bullish case i believe that's also going to bring a lot of excitement early on with uh nfts and you're going to see a huge price action for NFTs within the next, you know, month, maybe month and a half if we get a bullish case for Ethereum. That's if we get a bullish case. Now, that that's going to kind of die off like we've seen previously. A lot of excitement and as if Ethereum keeps going along with the rest of the crypto space, you will start to see slowly month after month um dead periods within the NFT space. Doesn't mean it's gone, okay? Just want to kind of throw that out there. That's our prediction. The reason why is also checking out looks rare in comparison. We had a looks rare was dominated OpenSea for a little bit. Uh, most more recently, OpenSea has gained back that market share up here in that small. You can kind of see it is actually rareable, super rare, and foundation. They obviously are not anything near looks rare and OpenSea. But once Coinbase and Cedify come about, it's going to change the game. It's gonna bring a lot of users. NFTs are gonna explode within that uh, if there's a bullish case for Ether. This is all dependent on the crypto market space in my opinion. At this moment, we need a bullish case for Ether. We're starting to see it. And then the month, month and a half after that, you will start to see NFTs really take off and then cool off if Ether and the rest of the crypto space moves forward. Just my prediction, food for thought. Now, to end this video off, what we are gonna be looking at is are NFTs, the first question on this video, are NFTs gonna be priced in ETH or USD or neither, right? Here's, I think they're gonna be priced in both USD and ETH in the short term. My prediction for the macro view in the long term is the NFTs that are able to build the strongest communities, Board Ape, obviously one of those. Uh, I have my money behind Journey. As you very well know, we do a uh, Journey overview each and every week. And then CyberKongs. How we view this is that NFTs within those communities are gonna be purchased with the token economics of that community. So Bored Apes will no longer be able to be purchased through either Ethereum or the stablecoin uh, or wrapped ETH or however currently you're able to purchase certain NFTs. Bored Apes and that ecosystem, and then they might even bring on other crypt, uh, yeah, other NFTs like Cool Cats or anyone else that was in like World of Women in those videos for the commercial. And you have to use Ape Coin in order to purchase the NFT. I think that's gonna, you know, or it potentially might be Banana within CyberKongs is gonna rule the NFT space, or maybe JRNY token. Just saying. That's my prediction, is that these community tokens will ultimately thrive. There's gonna be a lot of volatility with them early on, and there is gonna be a battle for a marketplace share for uh, community tokens. So give me your thoughts in the comment section. You know, that's just my opinion on where we're tracking it and where we're headed. Currently, obviously, everything's priced in ETH and USD, but ultimately, ETH will dominate in the short term against USD when pricing against NFTs. And then ultimately, I think the dominant communities within the space will start to make a push for their tokens to be utilized for other uh, NFTs. And new NFTs that are dropping will want to be a part of those communities. And in order to get whitelist spots or purchase those mints, you'll have to use those uh, community tokens. Just my opinion, it creates use, uh, utility for those community tokens for the future, for anyone getting into the NFT space. But 
like I said, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this content. Hope you got something from it. Until next time, peace, everybody.